today, there's a great school of thought about treatment centers. When I got sober, there weren't very many treatment centers. And we were trained to dislike them. And I, uh, I spent a lot of years disliking treatment centers, all treatment centers. Over the years, however, I've come to be a little tolerant. I now like some treatment centers, and I don't like some intensely. And, uh, and you say to people, why would you want to go to a treatment center when you can come to Alcoholics Anonymous and get it for nothing? You know, you just want to shake them. And we forget what it's like, you know. Because I think about this. If I were on the beach in Santa Monica at night, and I wanted to go to Catalina, which is an island out of sight, and there was a little, a small ferry there called the SS Treatment Center with people who said we had coffee and food and attendance, and we'll take you. And you say, okay, what's the other deal? And here are two guys skulking down the beach saying, uh, we've got an invisible boat. You want to go with us? <laughs> yeah. Not me, Jim. Anybody in their right mind that had a choice and insurance <laughs> would go on that treatment center boat. I don't put them down at all for it. The problem, the only problem with the treatment center is this. You get out, just out of sight of land, and they say, well, we're turning back now. But I'm not there yet. Yeah. Just swim like hell. <laughs> remember, remember the comfort you had here. <laughs> and you start swimming. <laughs> and here come these two pukes in their invisible boat. <laughs> you want to ride in my invisible boat? I ain't that sick, Jim. <laughs> and you almost drowned, and here they come again. Want to ride in our boat? <laughs> you get in, and as soon as you dry off, you think, this is ridiculous. There's no boat here. This is an optical illusion. What do I do? Better grab an oar and row. <laughs> get the no oar. This is nonsense. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> and I would dive back in. Eventually, they come by one more time. You want to ride? <coughs> <coughs> Better grab an oar and row. <coughs> you crazy bastards. <laughs> and the irony is, the boat only appears after you begin to row. But no one wants to row a boat until they can see it. Which makes a paradox. You have to be kind of desperate sometimes to pick up that goddamn oar when there ain't no oar. <laughs> and the boat appears. And if you row long enough, the boat gets better and better and better. You wonder what you ever saw in that. <laughs> Young man, cream and sugar in mine. Sorry, kid. <laughs> when I was your age, I was 15. <laughs> and there's only one other thing to remember about this boat analogy. You get in a good boat, and it's great, and you discover you don't even want to go to Catalina. You want to stay in the boat, and it's great. And you pick up other pukes who are too dumb to roll. What's the matter with you? Come on. And after a while, it gets so good that you say, hey, man, I'm sure glad I found this. You put down your oar, and it takes a while, but gradually the boat disappears, little by little. You don't even notice it. Some people are back in the water dead before they notice it. So there's really only two potentially dangerous times in sobriety. One is when you're first sober, and the other is all the time after that. <laughs> if you... If you, uh, if you could just keep on your ball those two times, you're home free. But that's what AA is about. AA is not a become wonderful. No matter how hard you work this program, you will never rise above basic human being. 
imperfect, emotional, some days cross, just other days just so goddamn wonderful you could replace maple syrup on waffles. Or... <laughs> That's why they say in AA don't get too hungry or angry or lonely or tired. Not because they're bad things, but they are perspective disorders, perception disorders. When you're hungry, you stay all right, but everybody else gets a little stupid and slow is what they get. When you're angry, you just want a gun to educate it, you know. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm going to tell you about love, you savage! Boom! Boom! <laughs> when you're lonely, that brings out the self-pity in everybody ever in the world, you know, just... I guess they're probably all at a party somewhere. Right? <laughs> but they didn't tell me. When I'm not hungry, angry, or lonely, or tired, I stay the same, but thank God you all shape up a little bit. That's all. That's the function of AA. It's sponsorship. It's steps. It's meetings. It's fellowship. It's a taking actions. It is not to make you wonderful at all. It is to do something that is absolutely impossible that I know, that I can think of. It is to, little by little, upgrade your perception of reality. Everything else, little by little, shapes up. Not, but, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yes. And if you don't roll, that's the way it goes down. That's all right. That's all right. Hey, he's going to help. You know, wasn't this way in the old days when we were sincere. Yes. AA is the same as it has always been, I believe, since Bob, Dr. Bob and Bill sat in Akron, Ohio on June 10th, 1935 and decided to work with other people and to take actions that will help them recover from the necessity to have to drink. And that's what it boils down to where the rubber meets the road. All the slickness, all the parties, all the fun, all the conventions, everything. They're all great. But they are adjuncts to taking specific actions that will 